dramatization. Bad drivers cause car wrecks. Not paying attention to the road, operating electronic devices, and drinking while driving can lead to serious injuries. If you've been the victim of a bad driver, a trial lawyer may be able to help you recover money to pay your medical bills, reimburse you for lost wages, and compensate you for the pain caused by your injuries. If you, your friends, or family have been injured in a car wreck, contact me, Attorney Dennis Sperling, toll free, 866-529-2444. I'm here to help. So I've been wanting to talk about this for a while, but I just never put it on TikTok or anywhere because I know I would get negative feedback, but I really want to talk about it. So here we go. My ex-husband was African-American or is African-American. My fiance is Caucasian. Now, I was hurt so bad in the past by black men that, and on top of that, my ex-husband just put the nail in the coffin. And I was just like, I'm never dating a black man ever again. But then I was like, you know, I've always found white men to be attractive. But, you know, when you're younger, you always learn you don't date outside of your race, blah, blah, blah. And then you be afraid to date outside of your race by what the next would say. So when my ex-husband hurt me and I was just like, you know what? I'm about to see if the grass is greener on the other side. I'm about to see. So I took my black ass to the other side. And when I went on the other side, it was like stars. Ponies, everything. Are, bl are black women just inherently ungrateful? Because uh, let me let me put it in context for you. When I read Chancellor Williams' book, Destruction of Black Civilization, I noticed that when the Northern invaders came down, black women opened themselves up, allowed themselves to be impregnated raised the invaders' children, and it was that same buffer class of children that turned on their African, uh, their African family, their mother's family, the indigenous Africans, and allowed those northern invaders to come in and take over what we have now as Africa, basically a, con a conquered continent. I look at books like Daughters of the Trade, which took place in the night in, in 1500, all the way you know, the, during, during the pan, uh, the uh, transatlantic slave trade, it was African women who allowed these Dutch and European slave traders to marry into those families. They literally took care of these men and helped conduct the slave trade. Uh, would, they, would, they would enslave men and women. And um, when I look at that, it's like, damn, I'm starting to see a pattern. When I come over here to the United States, South Carolina, I believe, uh, I forget that, what's that major city in South Carolina? Charleston, South Carolina. 60% of the black slave owners in South Carolina, and yes, black people did own slaves. 60% of the, of the black slave owners in South Carolina were black women. And so, and then I look at the fact that, yeah, you know what? A lot of these so-called captives, sex slaves, in these relationships with these white men, we're happy to do that because it means they get to sleep in masses bed. They got to have masses half white bastard babies. They got treated a little bit better. They butter biscuits a little warmer, had a little bit more butter on it. You see them? They get to say, "My babies is my man. These are man," and they might mess around and inherit some money. 
Hell, when I look at the HR department right now in some of these white companies, them goddamn uh, uh, human resource directors, those black ones, damn, they give brothers the hardest time. So it's like, it, it's almost like, and, and, and please put me in my place if I'm wrong, but it seems to me as though black American women have been the best assistant to the white man in his oppression of black people since the since the first black man since the first uh, northern uh, invader came into Africa, does that mean we are inherently uh, our, our sisters are inherently untrustworthy? Are they inherently arrogant? Do they just think that little of us? Help me understand. What's up, what's up, what's up? Welcome to the broadcast, you guys. I hope everybody's having a great day, great, great night. I hope you guys, uh, wherever you are around the world, I want to give a big shout out to everybody in the chat room. Hit the number one button, let me know you're here. We are going to uh, have a conversation. And uh, you guys saw that video that I put up of that young lady basically saying she's traded in the black man and she's gone on and got her a white man. Shout out to my man, T. Sam. He says, uh, they sell this BS me while getting deleted by those, those same men see hate gets you hate and it also attracts deceptive people. So it's all on them. Yeah. I want to bring up the fact that over the past six months, we've heard so many of these lovely ladies say things like, why don't y'all just go in quiet? Why you got to talk bad about the black woman as you leave? And here, if you start Googling, you start seeing, seeing what's going on, there's always a video of a black woman talking bad about a black man after she's found a white man. To me, that's just straight up hypocrisy. And so I wanna talk about that because a lot of these women clearly have a very short memory, ladies. And I'm gonna give you an education that you probably have never heard before. Now, before we get started good, I want you guys to make sure y'all hit the number one button, but trust me, tonight is gonna be a real one. It's gonna be, it's going to be one of those ones y'all like, wow, that, that really had me thinking. Nevertheless, um, y'all make sure y'all hit the number one button. We'll be right back. There you go. Uh-huh, I like that clap. Boom! <laughs> so here's the thing, man. Um, I want you guys to understand something. Let, I want, let, let's take a quick look at this video again, right? I want y'all to look So at I've been wanting to talk about this for a while, but I just never put it on TikTok or anywhere because I know I would get negative feedback. But I really want to talk about it. So here we go. My ex-husband was African-American or is African-American. My fiance is Caucasian. Now, I was hurt so bad in the past by black men that, and on top of that, my ex-husband just put the nail in the coffin. And I was just like, I'm never dating a black man ever again. But then I was like, you know, I've always found white men to be attractive. But, you know, when you're younger, you always learn you don't date outside of your race, blah, blah, blah. And then you be afraid to date outside of your A race. Wild, by what the I next would say. So when my ex-husband hurt me and I was just like, you know what? 
All right, we're going we're gonna to pause it right there, okay? So here's the first thing I want you guys to get. We're listening to this, right? And I want to I wanna break down this, this gobbledygook. But big shout-out to Jamal Smith. He says, from the Thailand on, I know this is going to be hard-hitting topic, a topic with a lot of uncomfortable truth that will come out and is going to hurt the black man down to his core. It is. It's going to hurt your feelings, fellas. But uh, I'm your Uncle D, and I love you, and I'm going to speak the truth to you no matter what. Us, shout out to my man Clarence Everett. Uh, this is for my Matt Fee. Hey, uh, thank you so much, bro. I think I'm a I'm working towards getting my blue belt. Uh, you guys don't know I'm, I've been working on jujitsu going on two years now. I'm still a white belt, but uh, hopefully by October I will be able to uh, pass over and get my blue belt. So shout out to me for sticking to it. If I can do it, you can do it. Nevertheless, let's get back to this hard hitting subject. So um, <clears throat> who wants her? Right? Who wants this woman with this big ass Wonder Woman tattoo on her neck, huh? You know, isn't this the same crap that these uh passport hating passport hoes are complaining about as far as black men, right? Why you gotta talk bad about us? Just go. I see nothing but hypocrisy here. Now, if Michael B. Jordan said the same thing after it was proven that black women hurt him, right? Guess what? he'd be crucified, right? Y'all, they'll be slamming him. Black women would slam him and and the simps would slam him too. You see? It's almost like they love making us look bad. Shout out to my man, uh, Don Battle. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Um, The other thing is, and and let me actually give another couple of shout outs. Willie Manning, Hezekiah Coleman, Will, Randy, Randy Boo, Antonio Schuler, uh, Christopher Taylor, Walter King, Barry Hamilton, big shout out to you. Big shout out to my man, Essential Entities, and Everett, uh, my man, Everett Blake Swain II, Andrew Barker. Thank you guys so much. Sayonka, uh, brother, I can't say your name. I'm not going to butcher it. Uh, Big shout out to all you guys for the cash apps. And I also got some people that came through with the PayPals. And uh, so I want to make sure I give a shout out to you guys. Um, You know, some people, a lot of people contribute when. You know, when I'm not even on air, man. So big shout out to uh, Essential Entities, everybody, man, who contributed. But I just wanted to give a big shout out to those people. But here's the thing. Like I said, it's almost like black women want to make black men look bad. It's like they, you know, you complain about black men who say, hey, you know what? Uh, This is why I didn't like black women. But then you got this woman doing the same thing that you say you don't like the brothers doing. Right? I noticed that. And here's another thing. Notice how a lot of women, black women, they post these anecdotal stories to make men, especially black men, image bad in the eye of society. Uh, The thing is, fellas, we need to start posting our own stories up. And don't be afraid of the backlash because, you know, it's their weapon, you know? And they want you to be afraid to speak up and tell society your experiences and, and they want to be able to play the victim. But in reality, they're some of the biggest perpetrators in this whole situation but the thing is look ladies if you want a white man you want whatever man you want that's great the thing is i hope you have that same energy when you see black men going over overseas dating latinas afro latinas asian women african women and whoever else they're dating i hope you have that same energy right but nevertheless let's get back on this particular subject um I think I can speak for most black men and the thought of losing this classy, wonderful lady here with this Wonder Woman tattoo on and this nose ring and this, you know, throat tattoo who's radiating femininity. I I know that we're experiencing a loss for this, fellas. I know that you guys are tremendously upset about the fact that we've lost this, this prime candidate to be the mother of our children. Shout out to Dale Jennings. Thank you so much. Uh, and, and for you guys who didn't pick it up, that is straight sarcasm. Nevertheless, I highly doubt that any self-respecting black, white man or any man will take you seriously. Okay, why? Because look at you. Look at the tattoos. Look, look, look you got chest tattoos. You got ear. Look at you. It's almost like you're looking for attention and validation that your fiance that you say you have isn't giving you. You got color contacts on which says you don't like your own self, you don't like your own skin color. And so this is the, this is the still this is the human being that you are. This is what you bring to the table. Nevertheless, 
at the end of the day, you you this is a fun girl, right? This is a fun girl. Unless he unless he's dusty and she makes more than him, I wouldn't be surprised if this ends up. This is this is she's a fun girl. The only thing she can look to get is low hanging fruit. You get yourself a white pookie. That's what you're looking at. Nevertheless, if a white man is willing to settle for this post wall ran through woman with these ring earring tattoos, he's right. Go on ahead and do it, man. I, I salute you. There's somebody for everybody, but that, but everybody on the block then ran through already. And here's something else I want you to understand. You can't change that destructive programming by changing your dating preferences, ladies. I tell these brothers all the time that there is no geographical solution for an emotional problem. And if you have self-destructing programming, that's your problem, not anybody else's. Now, what I will say is this. Typically, when black American women date white men, they're on their best behavior. They're not talking back. Uh, she's, you see this lady's wearing her natural hair. She probably makes food if she's asked. She's doing that for now. The real her, that programming, that'll eventually make a breakthrough. But, but right now, she's doing what she has to do to fool that poor man. I'm willing to bet that when she went to the other side and she got her a white man, she put her best foot forward and she acted like she had some sense, not disrespectful in, in the uncooperative version that she typically, typically gives black men. Shout out to Roland Curtis. He said, go look at, I want you to go count these videos. And she's not the only one. My man Roland Curtis says, it's so funny how black women try to convince themselves that white Latino men find them attractive the way white Latina uh, find black. Uh, yeah, I know it's a competition. But what I want you brothers to do for me is go online, do me a favor. This is a group project. I need y'all help with this. Go look for, uh, go look and count all the videos of, um, of, 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 of these black American women with white men and these white men talking about how submissive these black women are and how they don't give them attitude um, and, and which causes them to question the narrative that black women are loud. I want y'all to go round those videos up, okay? Um, of course, black women will argue and say it's because they act that way with white men because, you know, white men are in their masculinity. But the truth is, we know that that's not it. We we know what it is. And I'm going to talk about that a little later. But skipping ahead of what one of the main reasons is, is also they know they have to behave themselves. They have to act submissive. They have to keep that act on because they are dealing with an entire family. And if they get out of pocket with that white man and his white family around, she's going to have to deal with all of them, even from the youngest to the oldest. So fear is also part of the reason why they behave themselves when they're with those white folks, okay? Now, um, the other thing is, um, if you're a destructive person now, then chances are you're going to be destructive or worse uh, later, okay? See, um, you're going to get that, that white man that you're dating now that's just going to be your fiancé. Shout out to T-Sam. Um, he said, yo, Dennis, you should make a collage of all the BS they say about Beat black men comments and videos all the way. Everybody can see what. Yeah, I know. I need y'all help with that. Email that to me at SperlingDennis at gmail.com. Uh, y'all clip those videos and email them to me. And then I'll, I'll definitely put a collage together. But the thing is, what I want to I say here is um, that white man is still going to get the same issues that her ex-husband got because she's still the same person. All right. And wherever you go, there you are, as they say. And, um, you know, is going to be a, a change. Again, there's no geographical solution for an emotional problem. She thinks it's the race of the man is the problem, right? In her mind, all black men are no good. All black men are bad. And I want you to keep in mind that this woman has a black father and probably has black sons, black brothers, and this is how she feels about uh, black men. So when these women say, oh, I love black men, recognize that this is who you're dealing with, all right? Now, as far as her ex-husband, uh, these women choose these men. You choose these particular kind of men. Okay. And 
you end up with results that you don't like, and then you want to blame all black men. See, we can go by color and culture, but that's really a stereotype because everybody is raised different. True, we have a, a culture. Charles Brown, thank you so much. Um, but uh, if you're not healed mentally and you're broken, then you draw those kinds of people to you, whether or not it's a black person, a white person, an Asian person, whatever. All right, we can't expect others what we can't give ourselves. If you're a broken person, you got issues, that's what you're going to attract. I'm not condoning crap that, that men do to women at all. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is that they choose these men time and time again, right? They Over and over again. Yeah. But the thing I hate the most is that black women often, when they talk about black men, they always talk about all black men. They put us all together as if uh, a black man like Barack Obama is the same as a black man like uh, Pookie and Ray Ray off the block. Two different people. How can you put us all together? But they do. Okay. Some are bad, uh, but some are good. Most are good. If you look at the stats. So it's not our fault if you choose, you make a poor decision and you choose the wrong type of man. See, here's the thing. Um, I bet that the man she chose, I bet, I bet he's, I don't think he's a high value man, neither black or white. Even the one she's with now. I mean, you know, look at the look at the neck tattoo. You can't take her to the company function with a big neck tat neck tattoo and a chest tattoo on. And the truth is, I bet that black man she was with didn't even do anything to her. See, they always try to make excuses for what they want anyway. See, these women, they pick the wrong type of men, they get treated like crap. And then they blame every black man because she because she didn't she didn't choose the right type of man. She didn't choose the kind man, the responsible man. He didn't excite her enough. So she so she get she made poor choices that yielded results that she didn't like. I don't know this young lady, but from from her assessment of her situation or her interpretation of this uh, of, of this thing. Um, it's her spouse selection that's the problem. See, she's not taking any responsibility for her selection as if relationships are made of Teflon, as though they can withstand anything. And that's not what, that's not, that's not what happens. See, there's always going to be, um, well, what, I, what I'm saying is, I'm curious to know about what she omitted. I'd like to hear what her husband, her ex-husband has to say about the situation that she brought, what she brought to the table, what she what she brought in the relationship, you see? And the other thing you fellas have to understand, and I want you to hear me very clearly, listen to me. This is why whenever I hear these lovely ladies talk about how they was abused and disrespected, understand that, uh, and shout out to Cody Marshall, I want you to understand something, fellas. Black women, if she, if a black woman can't disrespect a black man, that's considered abuse. If you will not let a black woman sit up and disrespect you, call you out your name, belittle you, that's called abuse. If you don't let her walk all over you and you set boundaries, then she considers that threatening. You understand? This is, this is the way they see things. If you don't tolerate their abuse, you, that's disrespectful. Uh, I mean, if you, if you don't tolerate their disrespect, she can't disrespect you, that's abuse. And uh, if she can't walk all over you, then that's a, she, you're threatening her. You see what I mean? That's, that's how they feel about it. Now, we're going to take a quick break. I'll be right back. Y'all make sure y'all hit the number one button. Let me know you guys are in here. Um, I hope you guys appreciate what I'm doing here, but the link is in the chat room. Well, the link ain't in the chat room yet. Shout out to my girl, Joan. We'll be right back. Look, if you want to date someone from the low quality crusade, by all means do it. Just be quiet about it. You do not have to bring up black women to date any of these low quality kings. If you want these patchy beard pirates, by all means have them. Just shut the fuck up about it. You sound like the white girls who flex on us about taking our Filipino men. You know, the Pinoy men we don't fucking want. But look, if you're on a quest for a green card, all power to you. 
you and any other cousin that wants these Viagra villains can live happy ever after. Just keep black women's names out your mouth. Girl, we didn't even start this shit. We got insulted first. Us, your fellow Filipinas. Oh no, you're westernized. We do not claim you. And what were you talking about? The Filipino men that we don't want. All of my ex-boyfriends are Filipinos. My ex-husband is a Filipino. And white women, they did not even brag that they got our Filipino men. Are you on drugs? And not all Filipinas want to have a green card. Me personally, no, I want a black card. A BBC. <laughs> well, I, I need to clown you because no one should take you seriously besides those, you know, American black women who's on your side. So, fuck this. I need to buy props for this. I don't even know how to put this shit on. Yeah. Spoon and fork, baby. Oh no, I, I need to remove this shit. This is the first time that I wore this shit, so no, no not for me. Alright, shout out to John Gray. Shout out to John Gray. That's what's up, man. <laughs> she is definitely an advocate for her people, and I support her 100% on uh, her checking her people and making sure they stay in line and also calling out the hypocrisy. In addition to that, I, I I respect the fact that she she stands up for her people when attacked. And don't get it twisted. Black women jumped out and start calling these women overseas dirt, foot, prostitutes, uneducated. And uh, they clap back. So I salute them. So shout out to you for the clap back, Joan. And uh, I stand with anybody who got who's got who's got that much courage to speak up on behalf of their people to you know, and when, when being attacked. I salute you. Uh, nevertheless, I want to bring up a conversation that, uh, well, not bring up a conversation, but I want to talk about this uh, this uh, this concept that that Brother Malcolm X brought up. Uh, he uh, did a September 12, in September 12, 1964, he was on the cover of a magazine, and he talked about something where, where he said, um, more or less, he, he explained how to black people, the white man's ice is colder. Okay. Shout out to James Graham. He said abuse should not be tolerated. We should be a, a we should absorb bad behavior from from baggage. True that. True that. Now, and and as it relates to this young lady here, okay. For a while, but I just never put it on TikTok or anywhere. You relate always this found white men to be attractive, but I want you to think. I want you to think about, I always found white men to be attractive, okay? What I find is, family, uh, black women are a group that um, they always want validation for other groups. Black men are not that far behind, okay? But in reference to black American women, and the whole reason I'm having this conversation with you fellas, because a lot of black women will jump up and tell you, we've been the most loyal women to black men and that's just a damn lie, historically speaking. It's just a lie. They have not been. They've actually been the most disloyal group of women that anybody has ever seen on the planet. And so them saying they have the most, been the most loyal is just an absolute uh, misstatement. It's just, it's just a falsity. They joined the white women in the feminist movement, which didn't even have anything to do with them. White women were fighting with white men because White men had uh, went and conquered the world and had all these things and was still keeping them oppressed. They couldn't, the black man got the right to vote before the white woman did, you see? And so basically what happened was, it was like, well, we are gonna come up with this feminism and, you know, because this white man has been keeping us oppressed. Black women joined into the feminist movement here in the United States. But my thing is at no point in the history of Africans in, in, in the United States, has the black man ever had control and power and authority over the black woman? He is always, the, the, the black woman has always been the white man's bitch. He has always been, uh, she has always been the white man's side chick. 
She's been his mammy. She's been his uh, his his outhouse lover. Okay, she's been she. He's never been out. She's never been out. Shout out to Ronald uh, White. He said these these H's are deep in their own echo chamber. Keep in mind these women they're accusing uh, of being dumb speaker speak better English than, than these high, these these lovely ladies. Yeah, you're right. You're right. But I want y'all to get to get this history lesson though. White women had a right to go fight against uh, uh, oppression that that, that uh, Project 8020, shout out to you. White women had a right to go fight against the oppression they were dealing with with white men. White men controlled everything and they didn't get nothing. Black women, women didn't have that problem. They were being oppressed and we were being oppressed right with them. But you see what happened? They joined the white woman and jumped on the feminist bandwagon. You see? And it, it sounds like a, a great trick. We can get this black woman to betray the black man. We can keep them separate. We never have to worry about a civil rights movement rising up again. So what did they do? They came up with government assistance, public housing, and the black woman fell for those crumbs. You see? See, black American women fail to understand, and maybe they do, or maybe they just don't care, that the other side created her narrative. They built the reality that we live in right now on the backs and blood and sweat and tears of black Americans and other people of color who existed in this country. That's history. And so when black American women run back to Zaddy or run back to this white man thinking he's gonna treat them better because he thinks that the white, she thinks the white man's ice is colder, it's really a dog going back to vomit. Look how black American women took sides in that Goldman Sachs things and it, 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 when, when, um, when they wanted to invest in, in black women. They didn't say anything about the black man. What that lets me know is that not only are they in it for themselves, but they're, they're on the other side. And that's why I'm telling you, brothers, this, and I want you to hear me. I mean this with all sincerity. I suggest you black men recognize that you need to get a whole new group of women. Whether you stay within the race, that's my preference for you. Shout out to Marcus Major. Shout out to Dale Jennings. I hope you stay within the race. I hope you find women of African descent in Africa, in the Caribbean, West Indian, South America. I hope you do. But if you don't, I'm okay with that. Because the most important thing is for you to find a group of women who don't have this sick sellout culture that black women have inherited, that black women have put upon themselves. Use your passports, create and build families and lives in other countries. And if you come here and you bring women here to this country, you make sure you keep them separate away from this toxic culture that black women have been spreading around. You don't want the, the culturally African women who are in this country raising your children. You want culturally African women from the motherland, culturally African women from the Caribbean, culturally African women from South America and Central America. You don't want these sellouts raising your kids, man, because you're just going to have a whole bunch of sellouts. That's what I see happening. And we can look back and think that these are the fancifully and think these are the women, uh, you know, of our grandmother's era, but they're not. These women that we have today, they're in cahoots with the leaders of Babylon. And let me tell you something else. I want you to hear me. I have Caucasian friends. And what I notice about them, when they do date black American women, they tend to settle. So the other thing I want you lovely ladies to do, and if you want to marry, marry who you want to marry. You're going to have to soothe his insecurities by never looking at another black man. And you're going to have to show your appreciation for being able to be married to him by putting your income in a shared account. Yeah, shout out to Mr. 43TX. And you better watch out that he doesn't use you as a come up because what's going to happen is when he started dating this black woman, white women are going to start saying, well, hmm, I wonder what she has that I don't have. And then it becomes a competition thing. And then guess what? He'll get the woman that he already wanted, that he'd been wanting. Because remember, he settled for you. And when he decides to cheat on you with that white woman, 
that black woman is going to be quiet as a church mouse. No announcements, no declarations. She'll disappear into the abyss. Now, had that been a black man, of course, she had to go straight to social media and tell everybody. Nevertheless, what I noticed about this video that we posted up about this young lady, this young lady proclaiming her love for her new white fiance and down in the black man that married her, she never explained how, how different these two men were. You see? And so that makes me wonder how accurate or how truthful her story is. She said that the difference is between like the stars and the ponies. And what that lets me know is this woman is living in, in a wonderland. She's living in a fictitious world. And, you know, or she's just making all this up. I can see right through it. Sometimes I, it's just so obvious. To many of you, it may be too. I find this also interesting. I've been on the internet long enough, and I've been talking to guys and listening to guys of all ethnicities, white men included, and I noticed that they're trying to get away from their own women in the Western world. What makes them think that the black woman in the Western world is going to be any different? They're all women. They're all Western women. And for the most part, they're all subject to this Western world environment and culture. Nevertheless, I wish her and her husband good luck, a fiance good luck. Um, but uh, either way, uh, <laughs> they get what they deserve. Now, the thing is, fellas, and this is going to hurt some feelings, and I want you guys to hear me on this. This, this is probably going to hurt your feelings a little bit. You brothers have to understand that these women never actually loved you. And I know that's painful to hear, but we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. But that's what we're coming back to. Get the likes. So, let me, I got to ask, ask this question. I got to ask this question. Because you're on this show with, with the cocktails with the queen. And there's a reason for that. It wasn't to have you defend or not defend Donald Trump. It was about, I care about what's in this contract with Black America for women. And, and it's not, we're not mentioned at all in the contract with Black America. And I you're mentioned. Know, I mean, when you when you mention black people, you mention in black women. So oh, don't count yourself no, out. No, yes, that's you not are. true. Black like, like administration say that when they black mention people black, is not black women, not black, black, black women are not included in black people. No, he's not. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. But that's like you know, that's what saying. That's like when the president says minorities, then he's including black people. But we all know that's not the case. Black women have specific needs that are not also being met. And we also feel that there should be some things that are specific to us in our plight as well. And I, I understand I that. Like, I feel like as and a black man, you can leave. No, I feel like well, you I just offered I just so, offered y'all to write a section up, boy. I just said I'm I, I don't mind <laughs> if you guys <laughs> help us. Oh, if okay. you guys help us write a section. You know, I've been open to all kind of experts in putting this together. It wasn't just me. We've, we've dealt with experts in all fields of this contract with Black America. So we're willing to deal with experts in the section when it comes to women. So that's no problem. Okay, I, stay. I, uh, shout out to Ice Cube for doing his best. That was, that was probably an awkward moment for that brother, man. Uh, but anyway, let's, I want y'all to hear a little bit more what this lady has to say. But then, and I all white men to be active but you know when you always learn you don't date outside of your race blah blah, blah. and then you be afraid to date outside of your race by what the next would say so when my ex-husband hurt me and i was just like you know what i'm about to see if the grass is greener on the other side i'm about to see so I took my black ass to the other side. And when I went on the other side, it was like stars, ponies. All right, so fellas, what she just said was, she's always found white men attractive, but she was reluctant to pursue due to how she was raised. Um. First thing, shout out to Dusty Nuts, always follow your true passions. There's, there's no need to continue living that lie. And that goes to all you black women out there who are listening to me. Um, if that's your true passion, 
Why waste your ex-husband's time? And also, why publicize it? Right? You always complain about black men who go off and find women of other races and then publicize it. Why don't you just go on and be happy? This is the same thing you say you don't want black men doing. You got a problem with it. But you, you, but this lady's doing the same thing, and y'all don't say nothing about it. Um, here's the thing. I wish you and your future husband the best. My problem is that you just admitted that you never actually liked black men. And that's something that a lot of black women ex experience. Like most black American women, they want, they, uh, they, they, that white man is their first choice. And she's only with the black man as a consolation prize. You know how if you go to like the price is right and you spin the big wheel and you don't get the big prize, you thought you was gonna get the washing machine and the dryer, but then you lose, but then they give you a, a shampoo set for like $120 cause you, you made it to the big stage. That's what you are black man. You that consolation prize, you the shampoo set. And she wanted the washing machine and the dryer with the, with the fancy buttons on it. That's the white man. So what she did was she waited around until she got an opportunity to get a white man. That's what she did. See? And it's funny how you got so many black women who say they're so prudish, but then when they get with these white dudes, these white men, they go do these slave fetishes. They go full ghetto gagger out there, right? They, 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 you know, as white men treat them just like they trash in the bedroom. I'm not saying across the board, but I'm looking at it. You, you got a problem with black men um, gawking at you and looking at you, right? Objectifying you, but then you let this white man treat you like a ghetto gagger in the bedroom. But the truth is, fellas, they don't mind being treated like trash by white men because he controls this society. And I've told you guys this before. Remember Cola Boff, that African lady who said she'd rather be a white man's whore than a black man's wife? You see? When black women say that the white man treats them better, remember there's a different, it's different meaning, it, it means something different. What it means is the white man controls society and the black man doesn't. Black American women uh, could be treated like royalty by black men, but it doesn't matter to them because they only appreciate and respect what the white man does for them because they're dependent on him for their job. And, 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 and so they, they rather be his, his, little, his, his, his little, uh, his trick. Notice how black women complain about racism only when they're being rejected by white men. They're not complaining about the police like we are. They're not. They got all the government jobs. Hell, they, many of the black women do the hiring and firing. They're the ones getting elected all the time. They're not, they, racism doesn't bother them until it comes to interracial dating. That's why they complain so much about black men dating interracially because that's the one barrier that they haven't been able to overcome. Here's something else if you don't believe me, fellas. Let a white man compliment a black woman on her beauty. Let one white man say, oh, I love black women. They cut a fool for him, don't they? You would have thought it was a holiday or something. You, you would have thought it was Martin Luther King's birthday, uh, Malcolm X's birthday, uh, uh, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Christmas, and 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 Black History Month rolled all into one. You got whole channels of black men dedicated, black men have dedicated entire channels to telling black women how beautiful they are. And one white man says, "Oh yeah, the black woman is beautiful," and they cut a fool for him. And what that lets you know, and shout out to my man Dusty Nuts, what that lets you know in this society, you'll never be good enough for a black woman. You'll never, you'll always be the secondary prize. Now I'm generalizing. There are some specific 
different. There's some specific black women who say, yeah, they appreciate the man because they got good sense. But most of these simple minded women are subject to, to, to society. Now, my thing to you, black women, you need to understand something. You're never going to be that white woman. That white man is never going to treat you better than he treats his own women. Ever. And as long as you keep hating, you, you love white men and you hate black men because you worship the white man's power. That shows how fickle and shallow you are. Some of these white, some of these black women have seen since childhood, they've seen the white man as their hero savior. He was a principal. He was a fireman. He was a policeman. Um, he was the one who brought the free cheese to your mama's house. He was the one who came and fixed things. He was the one who gave you jobs. He was a superheroes on TV. And, you know, you, you want to be part of the kingdom. You want to be, shout out to Cody Marshall, you want to be part of that kingdom. There are certain sisters that want to be part of the white man's kingdom. And you just lying, saying your relationships in the past with black men didn't work. Because the truth is you always wanted a white man. Every black man she gets, she's comparing them to white men. What's the translation on that? I've been just waiting around for a white dude to want me because that's who I really wanted. Now let me lie on the black man to justify it. That's basically what they're saying. And you brothers, man, you got to accept the fact that some of these black women are not suitable to raise your children. They're not suitable, especially to raise your black sons. That woman sat up here and said she's found all, she's always found white men attractive. In other words, I've always desired black, I've always desired white men. Shout out to T. Sam. Shout out to Dusty Nuts. But see, the thing is, she, they always got to use black men as their scapegoat to go get white men. I want you to think about that. Let's analyze that. Now, you're not running to white men who you say who, who you say you've always been attracted to. You're running away from black men. But let's analyze that. Why is it if you're running away from black men, then why is it that you always end up in the arms of a white man if it's not the white man that you wanted in the first place? Let me let me let me change the scenario up. Notice how you never see these black women running away to men from India or Asian men or Hawaiian men or Hispanic men. It's always white men they're running away to. So what does that tell you? What that tells me is that's who you wanted in the first place. And as soon as you black men begin to realize that and recognize the signs that you got a sellout amongst you, then you'll get away from her. Shout out to DJ Jarvis. See, black women suffer from that white woman's envy. They envy that white woman. They envy white women. And black women hate themselves. They want to be white women. They're conditioned by the media, by merchandising. Um, they put that towel on their head and try to imitate white women. And they, they do everything they do. They like children. They like the white woman's child. That's why they're not running after Indian men from India, or Asian men or Hawaiian men or Hispanic men. They want the white man because they want to take that white woman's spot because he is a top of the social pecking order. It doesn't matter how much money you have. Doesn't matter how popular you are, fellas. You will never be that white woman. You will never be that white. You will never be the white man. And she can never be that white woman if she's with you. But being next to that white man, at least it puts her in the position of a white woman even though she'll never be that white woman. This, this group of women has a problem. The self-hate is rampant. They want to be something they never will be. That's why they wear all that fake stuff on their faces. 
Let's look at these eyebrows out here looking like camels. Look at this young lady here. And the thing is, brothers, you can't tell them anything. I like your hair natural, but it don't look like that white woman's hair. And she's not looking good for you, brothers. Blackbeard Travel TV, thank you so much. She's not trying to look good for you. She's trying to compete with that white woman. This is a sick race of women that we have here. Fellas, we used to be like that. Look at that old Malcolm X movie in 1995. He was putting a conk in his hair. At that time in the 1980s, we had jerry curls. We had perms back in the 1960s and 70s. We got rid of that. Black women are still in that self-hate situation. It's embarrassing. They come in with all that makeup, trying to make themselves look lighter than what they are. Got that weave on, them long eyelashes. It's embarrassing. And it's embarrassing to you, but most of you guys won't say it. She thinks it makes her look better because her looking closer to white makes her look better. And so, ladies, good luck with these men from other races that you say you want to get with that look that you got. Let's recap this video. This young woman said the black man that she picked and married hurt her. She accepts no responsibility for that. She says she loves white men, but she's always been in the closet with that, but she never came out because why? Because that's not how she was raised. But she says she never really liked black men because they treated her like crap. But she, of course, she played the victim afterwards. Now she's finally getting that authentic white man Right? So I appreciate her doing a favor for the rest of black society and leaving. Shout out to DJ Jarvis. Notice also something, fellas. They hold, uh, just further proving my point, that these are who they really want. Black women choose white men with a whole different style, completely different than they would choose a black man. He might not even have a job. Black man has to be damn near Superman and he's still not good enough. Notice how a black man may have the same style as a white man, kind of quirky, kind of nerdy, straight up, square. But black women don't want black men like that. But they'll take a white man like that. Shout out to Kenneth Williams. See, because blacks are in this country a subjugated race because you have those shackles of mental slavery on your mind, black women have internalized that. And to her, the white man's group represents power and she wants to be associated with that. And so because of that, because she wants to fit in, she, she, that, that's internalized with her. So she cooperates with that white man. Look at the videos on the internet of all these black women and how cooperative they are with these white men. Look at TikTok. They showcase and they swirl relationships and they swirl babies. Right? At the same time, accusing black men of colorism and featureism. Notice that. Look at the hypocrisy. You got this woman blasting and talking bad about black men as she heads her way out the door to the white man. Same thing they tell us not to do. Same thing, the hypocrites. Shout out to uh, my man, Troy. Thank you so much. Look at all these black, where they said, they li listen to me. They say they got a problem with passport bros because we talk too much. We should have just quietly exited the room. Look at all these black women writers who've been bashing black men. These pro, all this pro-feminist literature. Right? Writing about, writing books on how to swirl and interracial romance and novels. They even had a book, a, a, a movie out some years back called Something New. And these same women are accusing black men uh, of seeking white women. And really it's them. 
Remember, they're not, and, and let me say this. Whoever you date, you date. I don't have a problem with it. My, my thing is the hypocrisy. You say black men are running after white women. In reality, it's black women that are running after white men. As I said earlier, y'all not running or going getting these Indian men. There's plenty of them here. You're not running after the Mexican man. There's plenty of them here. You're running after the white man. Hell, look, for a long time, Black woman's favorite show was a movie, a, a show called Scandal about a, a Black woman who educated, working in the White House, and she's the, the, the president's bitch. At the same time, Black women boycotted a movie called Red Tails because it had an interracial relationship in it between a black pilot and a woman over in uh, Italy. Even the movie, uh, the TV show Nick Cage. You guys remember, I'm sorry, Luke Cage. Y'all remember Luke Cage? Marvel superhero. They boycotted his TV show on Netflix because he's married to a white woman. Meanwhile, you got these black American women who've been pushing this interracial relationship thing since the 1980s, at least. Now, right here on the internet, look at this swirling and slash divestor movement. And they got the nerve to tell you, brothers, you're the one running after white folk. And you same, and here's, here's the cold thing. You same women are now accusing black men of being pass of passport bros of sex tourism without any receipts. No receipts, but we got receipts on y'all going down to Jamaica, getting your backs blown out by the renter dreads and propositioning underage boys to have sex with you. We got receipts on that. We got video footage it's all on the internet. So who's the problem in the black community? Who's the real problem? Who are the real tyrants? Who are the real liars? Who are the real sellouts? Shout out to my man Dusty Nuts and shout out to T. Sam. Who's the real problems? And let me tell you, let me tell y'all something. Let me get up close here. See, what you lovely ladies don't realize and what you refuse to understand is that after you get used and abused, they're going to send you back. Your time is eventually going to come. Nothing's changed. They still think of you the same way as they used to treat you, see, see you. And as one of our great, uh, John Heinrich Clark said, one of our great historians, uh, white supremacy always breaks its tools when it's finished with them, and you're just a tool. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to take a quick history lesson. And I want y'all to hang in here for me. Just, just, just hang in here. I know you're bored. I get it. Y'all used to me screaming and hollering at the, at the Internet. I know you like that excitement. But we're going to take a tour down memory lane because I need y'all to hear some history that you might not have understood or you may not know that I've glanced over before. So y'all make sure y'all come right back. We'll be right back. Y'all hit the number one button. Don't, don't run off. Come on back. We're going to get a little history. We're going to tell you about this white woman, or this blue woman and what she's really been doing over the past three, four, five hundred years. I am the Blizzard King. Now, what does that actually mean? What that means is I represent that cold shoulder that you're going to begin to feel from black men. And we see you for who you are, black woman. We see you for the hate-filled individuals that you become because of your selfishness and your waywardness and your falling away from morality and what the most high God wants for you. But let me tell you the difference between you and that white woman. That white woman stood by her man. Through 500 years of blood and guts, she stood by her man. 
And whether she liked it or not, she was right on board with him dominating this world. The Asian woman has been oppressed. The Asian man has been oppressed by 500 years of, of, of white male domination. So has the Native American and the Indian in India and the African and the Arab man, everybody. It's the white man's time to rule. Everybody gets a chance. Black people had 80,000 years and you sat next to the black man when he ruled. For the past 500 years, the white man is ruling. Guess what you do? Instead of being good companions and getting in line and waiting your turn again, you want to crap all over the black man, even the ones that mean you well. So ladies, you're being replaced. And here's the thing. I'm not going to be nice to you about it. See, I'm not like Kevin Samuels. He tried to do right by you. He tried to teach you. But I've realized you're going to hate me anyway. So what I'm going to do is give you a reason to hate me. So when I'm called home to my ancestors, all that you say will be justified. And I'm okay with that. I am the blizzard. All right, welcome back to the broadcast. Now, we're about to get close in, in person. We're about to hit some nerves here. Uh, you guys make sure y'all hit the number one button. Uh, and, and let's have an honest conversation here. Uh, fellas, we have a nation full of whores who have sold us out. And that's, I, I, I can't really say it any, any different than that. These are not your grandmothers. These are not your great grandmothers. These are not the women that came before us. These are not Harriet Tudman's. They, uh, they, they took the apple, they bit the apple, and that's where they at. Shout out to Mr. Breeze. Shout out to uh, my man, uh, I, I think it's Love Crossing. Thank you so much. And Andre and Andre Love. Andre and Andrea Love Crossing Borders. Thank you so much. Uh, this book is probably something that most of you all have never seen before. You've never heard of it. <laughs> you don't know what the hell it is. Um, this book is written by Chancellor Williams. It's entitled Destruction of Black Civilization, Great Issues of Race from 4500 BC to uh, 2000 AD. Okay. Now, um, this book chronicles how Northern invaders came into Africa. And when they came, and I, and I actually, I've, I've had a book, this copy of this book since I was uh, 18 and 19. We had a copy in my family library uh, along with many other books. So, you know, it's just part of who I am. Okay. And so I'm, I'm not going to try to educate you on the entirety of the book, but the gist of it is when Northern invaders, uh, from, uh, from, uh, from Indo-Europe, uh, Arabia, when they came into the um, African continent, to the fertile grounds of the Nile, when they came down into that, they encountered black people. Black people being open, black people being xenophilic, uh, meaning they love, they embrace people of the cultures. They learned from us. We had some of the greatest uh, scholarly institutions. Many of their great philosophers learned from us. They came, they liked what they saw, they conquered, they immersed themselves in the culture, they learned everything we had to teach, and then they began to attack us. Now, as you can imagine, these lovely ladies, uh, just like they're doing now, laid down and spread them wide. And they gave birth to a mulatto race of children. Recently, one of our good comedians here Kevin Hart made the mistake of reminding those Egyptians that Egypt, <laughs> uh, the Egypt that built all the great civilization that we talk about when we refer to Egypt, was built by dark, dark black, blue black, purple black Nubian people who could withstand the sun and the weather down in that part of Africa. Black, black, blackity black. Black, black, black. 
super black. So the question you should be asking yourself is how did they go from dark, dark, blue, black, black, as they are in Nubia, in Uganda, to being the color those Egyptians are? Well, part of those people are Arab invaders, and the others are descendants from the mixture that happened between those northern invaders. If you go to Eritrea, you go to Ethiopia. I love my Ethiopian brothers, but Eritrea, Ethiopia, you look at them, they look clearly look a lot different than our Nubian brothers. You can tell there's an admixture in there. How did that happen? Because the lovely ladies spread them wide, then laid low, and let these northern invaders impregnate them. What happened then? They gave birth to a whole mulatto generation, a mixed race of children that then act as a buffer between the, the, the northern invaders and the African, the indigenous Africans who were there. Not only that, but those children then sided with their fathers, the invaders, over their mother's people. And it provided an opportunity for what? For, for Europeans, Asians, Indo-Asians to come and overrun Africa. Rob it of his resources. Take whatever they want. And that's why we have Africa. Is it? But it was those women who laid down and opened their legs and gave birth to these children. This wasn't all non-consensual sex. These women willingly did that. As I told you before, one of our greatest attributes as an African people is that we are open to other groups. We are xenophilic, which means we love and embrace. That's why oftentimes when Africans would travel around the world before, uh, damn well before Columbus, we were accepted because we embraced their culture. But as though, but even though this is one of our greatest attributes, it is one of our biggest downfalls. Because even today, our African brothers are allowing people from China to come in, give them BS loans, build infrastructure, so-called infrastructure, at exorbitant rates, impregnate women. There are so many African women right now in Africa who are raising children from Chinese workers who impregnated them and left. And those children in 20 or 30 years, I promise you they will be empowered by the Chinese government. They will be. And they are going to provide an inroads for these Chinese, the Chinese empire to get to permanently, or at least for a very long time, sink its talents into Africa and drain it of its resources the same way the Europeans have done for thousands of years. Why? Because for some reason, we allow others to come in, starting with our women. See, here's what you got to understand. I want you to hear me something. These lovely ladies will tell you all the time that black women want, black men just want white women. At what point in the history of man have African men had access to white or European women in great numbers? systematically when they not this is not a, they ain't pumping millions of white women down to africa that's not what's happening white men go to africa they have access to black women we can say the moors that was for 800 years in the recent time period we can say that but many of them were African and also Arab. But there was always admixture because right there at that rock of Gibraltar is so short, it's so close. These are still Mediterranean people. So it's never been a time in reality where black men have sought after and actively sought after white, white, white women. But throughout the history of time, since the first North invade, Northern invader entered into Africa, White men have had access to black women, and these black African women have willingly given themselves to these invaders. That's what's happened. Now let's fast forward to another time. 
This is a fantastic book that I have here in my library. It is called The Daughters of the Trade. Atlantic Slavers in Interracial Marriage on the Gold Coast, the Early Modern Americas. This book came out relatively recently, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> December 7, 2016. Some of you probably were children. This book chronicles how European merchants befriended and intermarried with African women on the west coast of Africa were welcomed and taken care of by these African women and then participated in the slave trade of their own people. Knowingly. So for you fools who still don't know that Africans didn't know what was going on, yes, they did. They were knee deep in it. And my African brothers, that's just something that you're going to have to deal with. That is part of history. It is not going anywhere. It is not going to change. You can't assuage it. You can't dissuade us from knowing the truth. That 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 shit. It's it's the truth. The Pandora's box is open. This is the reality. Now you can nuance it. You can say a lot of different things, but at the end of the day. This group of dark-skinned black sub-Saharan sub Africans sold this group of sub-Saharan Africans into slavery. Let's read this. Severn Brock's first language was Ga, yet it was not surprising when in 1842 she married Edward Karstensen. He was the latest governor of Christiansborg, the fort that is in the 18th century have been the center of the Danish slave trading in West Africa. She was the descendant of the God-speaking woman, women who had married Danish merchants and traders. They'd been doing it. Their marriage would have been familiar to the Gold Coast traders going back nearly 150 years. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? You see this? You see this? This been going on. It had got imagine. Look how uh, America ain't three hundred years old yet, right? Not even three hundred years old. They're telling us that by eighteen forty-two, this has been going on for one hundred fifty years. Long, long time. Long, long time. It's part of the culture. Part of the culture was these black women marrying these European slave traders and keeping the slave trade going. That was part of the culture. It was so ingrained in it. For some of you all who don't know what the Gold Coast is, let me show you. Right up in here. This is the Gold Coast. You got Nigeria, you got Ghana, Togo, Benin, all that right up in This is where most of you Negroes came from who ended up all the way down to here. Most of our brothers who, who came from uh, Angola, they went straight over to the uh, straight over to um, Brazil. And that's why they speak Portuguese, because this is dominated by the Brazilians. A lot of these folks went to the Caribbean. It was a hard trip getting up to the United States, so they would shoot over here and then come over. Get to the Caribbean and then shoot over. Nevertheless, let's keep, let's keep reading. And the daughters of the, now mind you, did, did, did they say anything about these women being R-A-P-E'd? No, they were married. These was real life marriages that took place between African women and these European slave traders, willingly. Why? Because these were successful men and these women wanted what they had to offer. In Daughters of the Trade, Pernille, Ibsen follows five generations of marriages between African women and Danish men, revealing how interracial marriage created a Euro-African hybrid culture specifically adapted to the, to the Atlantic slave trade. Ain't that some shit? You hear that? These women been selling out for three, four hundred years. These are your queens. 
that you black men are, 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 are being asked to die for. Let's, let's mind you, a, a European man, if you read this book, a typical European wouldn't even be able to live on the continent on the West Coast for more than a year. He wouldn't be able to exist on the West Coast. He just couldn't adapt. It would, he needed these people. In other words, what I'm telling you, family, is that the whole Atlantic slave trade could not have happened had these families, these African families, not helped these European men capture us. Do you hear what I'm saying? Do you hear how profound that statement is? But for our African brothers and sisters, but specifically our African sisters, marrying these European men and making creating a st stable environment for them to exist on the continent, we the, the slave trade wouldn't have lasted. It would have died off. It would have been too. It's been feasibly feasibly impossible to maintain. That's what they're telling you when you read this book. But for these hoes laying down, having sex, having babies, creating families and relationships with these slave traders, your black ass wouldn't be over here. That atrocity wouldn't happen. That's what this is telling you. Not in these numbers. Because the white men couldn't exist on the West Coast of Africa. They could barely survive. The mosquitoes, the diseases, malaria, no food, didn't understand the territory, the weather. They couldn't do it. It was their wives, these African women, that helped them survive so they can get that money. They fell for the breadcrumbs, the okie doke, the butter biscuits. Ain't that what y'all say? Butter biscuits, you blackity blacks. Y'all always talk about butter biscuits. This the butter biscuits. And here the cold part about it is. Although interracial marriage was prohibited in European colonies throughout the Atlantic world, in the Gold Coast, slave trading towns, it became recognized and re a respected custom. Yeah, don't bring that black bitch over here. Don't bring her to the Caribbean. Don't bring her back to Europe. She's just necessity. And when, you, and when you're finished with a black ass, you leave her right there. I told you earlier to all you divesters, when they get through with your black asses, they're going to leave you right back where you found them, you and your bastard biracial children. Because what we've learned throughout history is that when white folks finish with you, they, leave, they send your ass straight back to where you came from. You dumb asses. You ain't learned from history. This is why I tell you, brothers, and I love you, brothers, and you marry who you want to marry. Leave them white women alone. Leave the white women for the white man. Let them be with each other. That's all. Hey, hey, look, you love who you love, but I'm telling you, brother, it just what's good for you is not good for her. What's good for the what Malcolm X said it the best. What's good for the black man is not good for the white man. We both, all of us deserve to exist on this planet, but he can't love you because if he loves you, then the children that come from that love are not going to be his children. They're going to be children of color. Respect white people and other people enough to let them have their own, fam. That's why I tell you brothers all the time, and that's why I tell my own sons, marry women of African descent. Now, again, love who you love, and I will support you whatever you, whatever you, but you should marry women of African descent. It makes life a lot easier, and it shows a respect that, that, that you could not otherwise uh, have. There's nothing wrong with loving yourself and loving your own. Let's read on. Kassar, or keeping house, gave European men support of African women and their kin. Look at that, look at that. It wasn't a marriage. Basically, these bitches was keeping house. That's what they, they referred to as Kassari. <laughs> he telling you, you're a housekeeper. You're not even a wife. You just temporary. What did it do? It gave Europe.
European men the support of African women and their kin, which was essential for their survival and success. While African families made alliances with European traders and secured the legitimacy of their offspring by making the unions official. So they was all in with it, fam. And I know we got a lot of African brothers. This is your history, brothers. This is what your teachers and your professors are not telling you. You want to know how black people ended up here? Our own people sided with European slavers and sold us into slavery. It was mechanized. It was cultural. This shit went on for 500 years until the English brought it to an end in 1808. For many years, Euro-African families lived in close proximity to the violence of the slave trade. In other words, shit, the goddamn slave pen is right down there. Your wife black. You got some little biracial children. You out there whooping up on other Negroes. This could be their relatives. I ain't give a shit. Sheltered by their Danish names and connections, they grew up wealthy and influential. They ain't they, they what these divestors want. They don't want to be treated like the rest of you Negroes. I'm special. I'm a divorcee. I'm a Lexingtonian. Right? We, we special Negroes. We not like the rest of these niggas. Oh, no. So Zaddy leaves you. Shout out to Michael G. But their powerful position on the Gold Coast did not extend to the broader Atlantic world, where the link between blackness and slavery grew stronger, and where a Euro-African descendant did not guarantee privilege. In other words, yeah, you're, you're special here on the coast, but if we catch your ass out there in that open water, you'll be a slave too. We're going to take your ass straight down to Haiti or Jamaican. We're going to be whooping your ass too, Mr. Devossier. Think about that. They knew this. They knew the treachery of slavery. These women, year after year after year, decade after decade after decade, still laid down with their European slavers to help enslave their own people. They, they, they laid down and busted wide open. You hear me? So I'm gonna ask you again, who are the, who are the biggest sellouts? Who's the most disloyal group of women on the planet? Who is the most disloyal group of women on the planet? Study telling you that they're the most loyal group of women on the planet. Huh? Who? This is but one answer, according to our historians. And some of us will say it's because, well, you know, the black man and the black people are always open. We're always open to others. We open. We're xenophilic people. The African has always been open to other cultures. And that's a good thing. But is it really? Is it really if being that open throws you in the 500 lit? It be, it be, it being that open now, you're just whores? Because you can be so goddamn open, your brains can fall out, right? You can be so open-minded, brains fall out. That's what you see happening right now. Now, let's move on. Some of you say, well, these are our women. Come on. Y'all type our women in the chat room. Ain't that what y'all say? These are our women, right? Don't y'all say that? Come on. Don't run from it now. Our women. We need to protect our women. Come on. Type our women in the chat room. Don't be scared now. Where are you blackity blacks out? Type our women in the chat room. Type it. Don't run. Don't run from it. No, don't, don't, don't run. <laughs> don't run away. Our women. <laughs> Ain't that what y'all used to say with your little X hats on and your red, black, and green, your black African medallion on? Type our women in the chat room. Come on now. Don't run from it. It's time to get it. Praise God. Don't make me put Jesus on. I'm going to pray it up out of you. They were never our women. Let me give y'all some historical facts that you may not be aware of. Think it's important. 
go ahead and get get in it. Feeling myself, you know, I'm up late. It's when I get a little zany. That's why y'all can't do me. Uncle D is crazy as hell. Did y'all not realize that? Praise God. Yeah. So here's the thing. In 1860, there were four million slaves of African descent in the United States of America. Well, let, let me say it like this. Four million. Four million. And that four million. Four zero 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 zero. Right? Okay. Now, in 1808, there were 400,000 slaves, uh, black people of African descent in the United States. How do we go from 400,000 to 4 million? From 1808 to 1860, 52 years. So you telling me in 52 years, we went from, mind you, first one got here in 1419, right? I'm sorry, not, not 1619. So from 1619, 1808, which is a little less than 200 years, we got 400,000. So it took 200 years to get 400,000. And then in 52 years, we all of a sudden got 4 million. Hold on, that don't match to me. That, that don't add up to me. Well, let me give you a little historical analysis. So basically what had happened was, Y'all with me? Hit the number one button. You bored? Are y'all bored yet? I'm going to try to bore you motherfuckers to death with some knowledge because you, you, some of y'all ain't, don't, you, you need it. You do. So basically what happened is 1788, the United States legislator decided that they were going to abolish slavery. But the law wasn't going to take place. I think it was 18, uh, uh, 1787, actually. But the law wasn't going to go into place till 20 years later. Okay? So we're going to abolish slavery, and we got 20 years. Now, mind you, in 1787, 1788, it wasn't a whole lot to the United States. We had some submitted land. We had New York. We had pretty much we had New York all the way down to like Georgia. And uh, that was about all we had. Okay, we had some colonies and some territories. But what? But we still had a whole lot of shit to do. But we had to end this slavery thing. Because guess what? They was whooping ass down in Florida. They had the Florida problem. The Seminole Indians down there had hooked up with those African slaves and they was wearing the U.S. Army out. Wearing them out, wearing them out, wearing them out. They would sneak over, they would sneak through Georgia, go up to South Carolina, and wear their ass out, free more slaves, and go back down to Florida. It was a problem, okay? And all of us know about Haiti. 18 what? It was 1804. Haiti was in 1804. That revolution, huh? They was like, these Negroes are out of pocket. These Negroes are going to get themselves free. We got to let them free, but it's got to be orderly and it's got to be on our terms. Because if we don't get these, if we, if we let them get free on their own, they might goddamn take over. So they had to have order. So they was going to, we were going to get free. Whether we had a civil war or not, black Americans, those, those people who came from that, we was going to goddamn get free. You hear me? Now at that time, Spanish, Spain still ran Florida. The French were still in charge of Haiti. We had to get rid of their ass. We had to get rid of them. Get rid of, we had to get rid of them. Got rid of them. 20 years went by. Now it's 1808. What are we going to do now? Well, for that 20, 20 year time period, they was bringing all the Africans they could over here. For that first 200 something, that first 200 years, it was mostly men. It was just mostly black men here in the United States, little boys and teenage boys. That's what we had, mostly black men. That's why we wasn't a whole lot of breeding going on. You had some women, but those slave ships were filled up with 99% percent 
black men and black boys and black little boys. That's why they didn't have a breeding problem. That's why for 200 years, you had a labor force that wasn't reproducing itself. It wasn't until 18, uh, 1777, 1778, that they, they start bringing black women over here, African women. And guess what they start doing with them? They start breeding them. Yes, breeding, just like cows, just like cattle. Y'all bored? Let's read a little bit. Breeding in response to the end of slave imports. The prohibition of the importation of slaves. What is that? I just talked about it. The act prohibiting importation of slaves of 1807 is a United States federal law that provides that no new slaves were permitted to be imported into the United States. It took effect on January 1st, 1808, the earliest date permitted by the United States Constitution. Okay, in the United States after 1808, limited the supply of slaves in the United States. This came at a time when the invention of the cotton gin enabled the expansion of cultivation in the uplands of short staple cotton, leading to the clearing of lands cultivating cotton through large areas of the Deep South, especially the Black Belt. Basically what they saying was, well, you know, we was going to be done away with slavery because this shit was just too goddamn hard. You got them slaves sitting there, they got to pick all them seeds out. Take too long. Take too goddamn long. It's easy ways to make money. Then this smart motherfucker named Eli Whitney came up with something called a cotton gin. And so it made it a lot easier to process the cotton. And so because it made it a lot easier to process the cotton, he said, okay, well, let's go back to this. We need more slaves now. But we got this pesky law that says we can't bring no more Negroes over here. So what do we do? What is it that we do? The demand for labor in the area increased sharply and led to an expansion of the internal slave market. What does that mean? The slaves that we sell up around here amongst each other. At the same time, the Upper South had an excess number of slaves because of a shift of mixed crop agriculture, which was less labor intensive than tobacco. To add, the, to add the supply of slaves, slaveholders looked at the fertility of slave women as part of their productivity and intermediately, intermittently forced the women to have large numbers of children. During this time period, the term breeders, breeding slaves, childbearing women, breeding period, and too old to breed became familiar. Now, I want you to understand something. When they say an African woman's productivity was dependent on her ability to have large numbers of children. They're not talking about two or three kids. They're not talking about three or four. They would have these women have up to 15 and 20 children throughout her birthing life. And they started them off young. The minute the little girl had a period, she could be 11, 12 years old. They put her in a cage or put her in a pen with a stud male, and he bred her up. So you got grown men being forced to have children sex with little young girls. This is in 1808, 18, uh, 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 1820. Look, look at some of the records. Look at some of your family's records. Go on to Ancestry.com. You'll see grown-ass men with, with young girls. 11, 12 years old. That's part of our history. And let me tell you something else. It wasn't just the black men breeding with these girls. White men, owners, the, the goddamn uh, overseers, cousins, fam, they would bring them girls to town. They would come in town for a party and sleep with a young, uh, a young girl, get her pregnant and put that mixed child right in there with the rest of the, uh, uh, the slaves to be worked and, and sold. So you wonder how we went from 400,000 to 4 million? It was a machine. It was a process. It was a, a, a specific, uh, it, 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 was an, it was industrialized. It was in Dutch, it was, a, it was an in Dutch, they basically treated the black woman's womb 
like it was an industry. But she was never brought over here to be your wife and be your girlfriends and be your mothers. She was brought over here to be a slave, breeder, childbearing woman. It didn't matter who got her pregnant. The whole point of having her over here was to breed because it was big money. Slave owners often bred their slaves to produce more work. If she wasn't your wife, your child wasn't going to grow up and have his own uh, life and education and fantasies and travel around the world. He was going to be a worker. And if it was a she, she was going to get over there and be right next to her mother getting pregnant, typically by the same men. This woman was, the African woman was never, there was never any intent to have a permanent African population descended from slaves in this country. That was, that was never the outcome. Matter of fact, they began to tamper down uh, the, the damn uh, 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 slave imports until they invented the cotton gin. They said, oh, we got to ramp it back up again. We found a new way to make money off these niggers. There was never an intention. We were supposed to die off and be gone. Maybe a couple of us left, but we were supposed to disappear. That atrocity, that was the great solution. What are we going to do with these slaves? Well, they knew if you leave these Negroes around, they're going to be mad. You got to deal with them. But if we don't have any women here, eventually we prohibit them from having sex with Indian women and, 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 and white women. They'll eventually die off because it's just a bunch of dudes over here. But because of those uprisings in Haiti and Florida and all those issues, we, we, they cut it off. They cut off the importation of Africans from Africa because they were too much trouble. You can't take a person and he'd been born in freedom and then put him in slavery and think he's going to uh, uh, be cool with that, that, that status. He's going to always fight for his freedom because he knew freedom. But a person who's been enslaved their whole life, they don't know freedom, so they don't know what they're missing. So they said, we're going to stop bringing slaves over and we're going to work on the, 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 the intra importation. Internal slave trade. And that was fine until Eli Jen Whitney came up with the cotton gin, which made available land that wasn't normally made available. It, it made the process more lucrative easier to do y'all with me y'all mad y'all bored <laughs> i don't give a damn the function of such breeding farms was to produce as many slaves as possible for the sale and distribution throughout the south in order to meet its needs so black people were bred black bred you could be half white half any whatever your ass was a slave you were bred it wasn't nothing. It wasn't, this wasn't fancy. Trace, you could all you, I want all you Negroes to do me a favor. I want you to trace your hair, go to ancestry.com and trace your Negro cells back. More likely than not, you're going to trace your heritage back to a place in Virginia or somewhere in Maryland or somewhere in South Carolina because that's why all the slave farmers, I trace my own heritage back to the King Plantation in Virginia. I know what your mamas and grandmamas told. Yeah, we was kings in Africa. I was told that my great-great-granddaddy named himself Washington King after the president and because he was a king in Africa. That bullshit. No, he was a Negro from the King Plantation, and that's why he had the last name King. The King Plantation was a breeding farm in, in, in Virginia. You hear me? There's nothing fanciful about it. There's nothing dreamy about this, fam. This is the cold, hard truth of what slavery was in the United States. 
We were bred for this. We all jumbled up, mixed up racially, culturally. Some of you, you know why we have a problem with intermixing in Baltimore? Shout out to everybody in, in Baltimore, Maryland. Y'all got an issue up there. Y'all got an incest problem up there. Because the most of y'all are related to each other. Because it was breeding farms up there. Right in those ghettos where y'all live in. This is plantations up there. They always make you think that the South, and when they say the South, Georgia, Alabama, Louisiana, Mississippi, that's where the slaves were. No. It was in North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, New York. All these places. Had, hell, it was a slavery. New York is one of the first slave rebellions. New York City. You don't know your history. Slavery was everywhere throughout this country. Hell, when Lincoln abolished slavery, he just abolished it in the Confederate states that rebelled. So if you had Negroes in Negroes in, <laughs> north of the Mason Dixon line, you keep your Negroes. It wasn't until the 13th Amendment that they abolished slavery throughout the United States. But the Emancipation Proclamation so, uh, solely liberated the slaves in the Confederate in the rebe rebel territories. Ain't that something? Your black ass is living in Maryland, you still a slave. Emancipation Proclamation don't mean nothing to you. Listen to this. Two of the largest breeding farms were located in Richmond, Virginia and Maryland's Eastern Shore. Ain't that up there by Baltimore? Ain't that where y'all live? Richmond, VA, and Maryland. Think about that. And some of you black folks from the Caribbean, some of my Jamaican brethren, big up, big up. Do you know that after the Revolutionary War, one of the places that they took the slaves that sided with the British crown was to Jamaica. So many of you are also descended from uh, American, uh, the United States. Many of your relatives are also were enslaved here in the United States. Keep that in mind. In Canada, they sent them up there to Canada. Keep that in mind. Yeah, history is something else when you get to know it. It's antennas are everywhere. Planters in the Upper South, Upper South states started selling slaves to the Deep South. In other words, what they're telling y'all, fam, what they're telling you is that we were breeding them up north and we would sell them down to places like Mississippi, Louisiana, Alabama, <laughs> Texas, Georgia. It was everywhere. Generally, though, slave traders such as Franklin A. Armfield, Louis, Louisville, Kentucky on the Ohio River was a major slave market and port for shipping slaves down river to Mississippi to the south. New Orleans had the largest slave market in the country. Over there in the French Quarter, that's why that whole thing was built up. Y'all down there partying in the French Quarter. Look at that. Shout out to the NO. Had the largest slave market in the country and became the fourth largest city in the U.S. by 1840. 1840. Y'all great, great granddaddies was alive then. 1840, the wealthiest mostly because it's slave trade associated business. You hear me? Now, I say all that to say, because I know I'm long-winded. I want you to hear me. I say all that to say, given the context of U.S. history, I find it both hilarious and also a goddamn shame that you all think that these are our women when they never have been. Those women belong to the white man. Those are not our women, brothers. These same women that you're willing to put your life on the line for, that's the white man's child. He created them. That's why I tell you brothers all the time, if you want a black woman, go get you a real one. Why do you think these women are so quick to side with the white man when it's time to call the police on your black behind? 
Why you think we have such a high abortion rate? They don't like your black ass. Why is there a movement online right now saying uh, 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 abort black baby boys? Why are they wearing weave and bleaching their skin trying to look that white, look like that white woman? Despite that you tell them they look better with their African cells and their black cells. You damn near got the KKK sleeping in the bed with you. KK Keisha. They're the main ones talking about fighting white supremacy and the main one enabling white supremacy. These same black women talk about the black man oppressing them and manipulating them and controlling them. They act like the word submissive is a dirty word. But on the flip side, for them, it's a flex when they go date the same man that looks like the men who oppressed them during slavery and oppression. The, de- the level of delusion is incredible. These are sellouts, brothers. And I thank God that the Most High in this age is exposing them for who they are. But more importantly, brothers, there is no way, there is no way you can produce a strong, confident, proud son, a proud African son, a proud black son with a woman like that. God has cursed her womb to only be able to produce the very men that she hates. And that is a horrible place for a black male child to be in. We're going to take a break, praise God, because I think it's necessary. I think I've said a lot. Are y'all with me? Have y'all heard me? Hmm? We need Jesus up in here. Under the blood, me say me under the blood. Jesus cover me under the blood. Under the blood, me say me under the blood. Jesus, you been cover me under the blood. In the morning when me wake up, and the blood that Jesus me take up. And when me feel like me, I go break up. Put the blood on me face just like a makeup. In the morning when me wake up. And the blood that Jesus me take up yeah. And when me feel like me heart break up Put the blood for me face just like a makeup Under the blood Under the blood Under the blood Jesus cover me Under the blood Jesus you be cover me Under the blood Under the blood me Alright welcome back Praise the Lord Lord, we're here today to pray. What's the number one thing that you can give me? Praise God. It's the number one color. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. We need to pray on it. Everybody, all the heads, all the eyes bow. Let's ask the good Lord for a good word. Genesis 3, turn to your Bibles. Genesis chapter 3 and 6 says, And when the woman saw that the tree was God, was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree to be desired to make one wise. She took the fruit thereof and did eat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
In other words, when she saw the food resources and she saw that it was pleasant, that was her lust for Zaddy, she took a bite. That's what she did. Once again, we see happening right here in modern time, Jesus. We see, again, the serpent dangling the fruit in the black woman's face, and she took a bite. Now, we also have some other verses that we would like to share from the book of Zaddy. Y'all turn to the book of Zaddy, chapter 3, verse 1, and it reads as follows. And in those days, a little booklet was sent from above that loosened all men from its ungrateful spirit called Keisha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That, un, that little booklet that we speak about today, that little booklet that we have with us today, our passport brothers has loosened us from the spirit of Keisha. We are now liberated, my brothers, liberated, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Verse 2 reads on and says, Thou shalt men move freely in those days not bound by any unclean Keisha spirits. Praise God. Use those passports, brother. You have, that is the book of Zaddy, chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. And last but not least, as is written in the book of Ask Clapolations, being a ran through thought with Zaddy does not make you not a thought. Praise God. Praise God. I thank you all for this wonderful time that you've spent with me on this fantastic evening. I've heard, I've, I've hoped that I've laid out the case of why this group of honorary women that we have are the most disloyal group of women on the planet and that you should no longer feel any guilt. No longer feel any guilt about traveling overseas and finding yourself beautiful women who will love and respect you, brothers. Amen. Respect. R-S-E, R-S, R-E-S-P-E-C-T, praise God. Lord, Lord, the, 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 the spirit of delusion came over my head. The dyslexia hit my head. I couldn't. Nevertheless, you brothers are free. Free as the birds in the wind, the flying coming to and fro. Don't feel obligated by the fact that you think these women are yours. They never were yours. And they've been treacherous. And, and, and they have not been loyal. As, as I said earlier, these women have demonstrated their lack of loyalty to you. And there's no need for you to be loyal to a group of women who are not loyal to thee. They publicly disrespect you. They talk bad about you. They treat, you, they treat you as though you are cockroaches beneath their feet. It's time for you to spread your wings and fly away. Go on over, brother. Go over and take yourself on over to Thailand. Praise God. Take yourself on over. Take yourself on over to, 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 to Thailand and the Philippines. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Make sure you pass by Africa, brother. Make sure you go to Ghana. Make sure you go down to Nigeria. Go to Togo Benin. Go to Uganda. Find your beautiful black woman. Don't pass up Haiti, Dominican Republic. Don't pass up these beautiful Caribbean islands with these beautiful black women. Don't do that. Make sure you go and find yourself beautiful wives all around the world and be free. Be free from any hindrance that you may think you have. Again, hindrance. Uncle Deacon hit the high notes. Don't feel the shame because they don't feel the shame. Matter of fact, they feel no shame. And if they turn your back, turn it back on you again, they'll do it to you again, brother. They did it before, they'll do it to you again. So to me, at this point, brothers, it's just a matter of survival. I want your children to have the experience of having mothers who love them. Because at the end of the day, fellas, you can't, if a woman hates black men, she's going to hate her black son. If she hates her black father, she's going to hate her black husband and her black son. She, she, a, a woman that is filled with that much hate for the men in her race, that's not a woman you want to have children with. And that's not a woman that can be re rehabilitated, period. We are dealing with a sick group of women, psychologically, physically, emotional, and you don't have the time to rehabilitate, rehabilitate them. So go get you. I would prefer that you brothers marry 
women of African descent. That's what my heart tells me to tell you. That's what I tell my children. That's what I've done myself. I, I, I hope that you will. I hope that you will say, you know what? Uh, we live in the United States and there's only a very tiny percentage of African women in the United States, women of African descent. Matter of fact, out of the whole uh, uh, African diaspora, African-Americans only comprise 2% of the Africans on this planet. And one of those percent is the black man. So black women only comprise 1% of the African women on this planet. So what does that mean, family? That means, brothers, there's African women all over this planet, the motherland, South America, Caribbean, go get you one. Have beautiful children. At this point, we have... 55.48% of black men who don't have children and aren't married and you're just riding away. You're 30, 40, waiting for that beautiful black woman to show up who's fit, feminine, submissive, and cooperative, and she ain't coming. You keep referring to these women as your women. History tells you that they're not your women. Go somewhere where, where the black man rules so that you can be respected because you will always be the consulary prize You'll always be the secondary prize that she really didn't want in this society. That's why our greatest leaders, Marcus Garvey, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Malcolm X, they told us to separate ourselves from these people. Why? Not because we don't like white people, not because we don't like Hispanic people, not because we don't like anybody, because it's good for us to do so. Because our children need to grow up seeing people who look like them in charge. Our women need to see men who look like us in charge. And as long as they see the white man in charge, they're going to get a white man to, to respect and you always going to be play second fiddle to him. So it's time for you black men to mature and be courageous and go forth in the world and find yourself beautiful wives, beautiful black women. I, my preference is that you get beautiful black women of African descent or African women and you marry them and have beautiful children, and beautiful family. Again, you decide to marry a woman from another ethnic group. I get it. I understand. But more importantly, make sure that she has a culture that's going to help raise those black children that you that you sire with her so that they love themselves and love their black skin and love who they are, love their heritage. That's what I want for you. That's what I truly want for you. And that's the most important thing. Nevertheless, I hope you all appreciate this conversation. Um, I thank you. I love you. Uh, for those of you who all were offended, you should be. Because it means you're guilty. Those of you all who don't like what I had to say, I'm fine with that because I, I don't mind being the bad guy. I embrace being the bad guy. You don't like what I said? That's fine too. Fight me on the historical facts. It'll send you back to the library. But I challenge you to prove that I'm wrong. I gave you the references. Go read those books and tell me those books don't say what I say they said. They say exactly what I said they said. And if you want to come to a different conclusion, that's fine. You're entitled to your opinion. But I see what I see. No difference than I see what's happening right now. We are living in a dying and dead culture because our women don't like us. They don't love us. In fact, they've demonstrated that they hate us. They don't respect us and they can't respect us. So it is what it is. Either way, everything I say, despite how much hate you all may have for me, I say it from a place of love, a love for my people. And if you all would treat black men better, I wouldn't have to defend them as much as I do. But as long as you lovely ladies keep doing the hypocritical shit that you're doing, telling us to go on on and quiet while y'all making all this noise, telling the whole world how you love the white man and how the black man ain't shit, we gonna keep talking. That's how that go. I fight fire with fire, we'll all burn up in this motherfucker. That's how that goes. And that's how I'm built. That's what I'm about. Nevertheless, this is Uncle D. I love you all. God bless you. And I'm out. <laughs>